I'll just be starting the meeting in a few seconds, so just if you'd hold on, we're just making sure everything works. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Andrea Sachs. I am the uh, coordinator for the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability. And I welcome you to our live DICAD. We call ourselves DICAD for short meeting. We have members here. And obviously, I see a few faces that I don't know. And uh, there is going to be a sign-up sheet that's going to be passed around. If you would put your name, email, on it, that would be great, because then we can put you on the list. If you don't want to be on the list, don't give me your email, and then we're fine. But we'd be welcoming new members if possible. Now, I have to get the agenda. The agenda's up on the board. You can see we've got, we've split the screen so you can see the captioning. And this is a meeting to just talk about many things. And also what's really important and what I'd like the group to think about before we come to it is how you found accessibility in this particular uh, IGF, in these buildings, and to come forth and tell us what you think could be better, that would, or what was good, whatever happens. So um, we are going to start with the review of the accessibility of IGF 2017. And we did have, remote par we did have a remote participation experience, and um, we want to talk about WebEx as a remote tool, and we want to talk about also the timing of the sessions, because before we came, we requested that there would be time. Many of the people who participate remotely have disabilities that make it difficult for them to participate remotely. If they have vision impairments or are blind, it's difficult to navigate remote participation tools. So I will make some comments. Oh, God, I nearly lost my thing. Excuse me. Uh, I will make some comments from my observation. But I would like to start with anybody in the floor who would like to say something about the uh, remote participation that we've had, or do I have to do it? Do we have anybody online who wants to do it? Uh, is Jerry online? Okay, one of the things we found, then I'll do it, one of the things we found about remote participation, and I've had a conversation with Chengi Tai, who is our secretariat, um, that we're going to meet early next year to try and do something better, was that blind people could, or persons who were blind, could not access WebEx. It was very, very difficult, and we did have one manage to get on towards the end of the second meeting, which was Ganilla Aspring's meeting on web accessibility and disability. I'm not sure I have the right name of your. Internet of things. Sorry? The Internet, of things. the Internet of Things. So we have come to the conclusion that unless WebEx changes its design, we really can't rely on it, and we are going to suggest that other. Uh, possibilities be explored. Many people have uh, mentioned the new technology, at least it was new to me, called Zoom. And much to my surprise, when I investigated Zoom with uh, the ITU Deputy Secretary General, we discovered that uh, our technical department in the ITU T, uh, which is where I do a lot of my work, was actually testing it and many other people here at the, uh, 
at the meetings here have mentioned Zoom, so that's one consideration. But we would like other people to make suggestions if possible because blind persons with disabilities have to be able to find it easy to use. Now, all of the different remote participation tools have difficulty, but Zoom seems to pass the test on that one. So uh, does anybody have any comments on what they'd like to say about that particular aspect? Okay, now, the lack of time for testing. We have always required and asked for and need desperately because of the different access problems extra time in advance. Also, we need good rooms that have good visibility and have the technology that's capable of being able to uh, be accessible to the people who actually come. And some colleagues have just come in, and I'm going to go back and ask them if they have any comments, because they have experienced some of the uh, aspects of accessing a what we call an, uh, a remote participation tool. Anyway, we didn't have that timing. We were lucky because we had some good guys who came in and really helped us and we weren't too far off the mark. But we really need to have, when we have persons with disabilities who are participating remotely or who need extra time to deal with things, that we have a, a, at least a 10 minute break before so we can set up and test the captioning and all the equipment. The captioning, I've got to say, has been pretty good. In fact, fantastic. Uh, we've been working, I've been working with Caption First for many years, and they are amazing. And they have learned, in my opinion, all of the terminology that we use in the ITU. So uh, I thought it'd be good to give them a plug. They have really been great. They're doing all the captioning in all the rooms, and it's all being done remotely by people who are in um, the United States, up in the middle of the night, listening to what you're saying and producing it on the screen. Now, we had to go through a little procedure to be able to, when we have one screen, to be able to have the separation. We really need two screens, even if we have a portable screen for visual situations, because it's difficult for, okay, we have so many lines, but it's nicer if we have a bigger screen with more lines. It's easier for everyone to read. But we're, we before, when somebody had put up a presentation, the captioning was obliterated. And we don't want to see that again. And we want the secretariat to be able to know that, to test that in advance. Uh, some of the people who have just entered the room didn't hear the first part of what I was talking about. And that was the problems in using the remote participation tool, which is WebEx. And WebEx is donated, I didn't mention this, by the Cisco company to the IGF, and they don't have to pay a licensing fee, which is one of the reasons why it's used. We, um, we have found that it's very difficult for persons with visual impairments to use it. And I wondered if some of the people in the room had any comments who just came in about that, and if they would like to comment, I'd be delighted if they would. And I'm seeing a hand go for the mic. And when you, when you go for the mic, would you introduce yourself by name? And if your name is a bit unusual, would you kindly spell it for the captioner? Am I correct that you wish to speak? Yes, yep, you know it's you. OK, go ahead. Okay, Push the button, but would somebody make sure? Yeah, you got it. You OK, got it. microphone is on. <laughs> yep, will you say your name, please? So we need a mic, mic where if we click, then there will be sound. It is on. Can you so, say your name, please? My name is Bhaskar Bhattacharjee. I came from Bangladesh. Uh, currently, I'm working with the Prime Minister Office as a National Consultant Accessibility. <coughs> this is the biggest issue. Many streaming conference and online meeting, they just use the WebEx, and which is completely inaccessible for the visually impaired. We not able to navigate. And also, um, maybe Skype is good, but it is not um, good enough for a big group discussions. So um, we need to identify some common solution for these types of online meeting. Either um, we visually impaired people sometimes feel marginalized and not able to actively participate without any other people's help. Thank you. Thank you, Vanish. What I wanted to say was one of the most important things is that independence. 
and one of our participants who is in Ireland was said, well, can't, was asked if anybody could help him get on, and he refused, and I don't blame <coughs> him. He wishes to be able to get on by himself, and why should he have to have help? He should be able to get on by himself when he wants. Can we make sure that mic is turned off? Oh, I see somebody going. Yeah, Mohammed, would you like to speak as well? Because yeah, everybody's my eyes. Go ahead, Mohammed. Uh, thank you very much for the record. This is Muhammad Shabir. Uh, Shabir is spelled as S-H-A-B-B-I-R. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity uh, on the topic of uh, online tool for the conversations or discussions or remote access. Uh, I would also like to register uh, my concern as a visual impairment participant and a user that WebEx is inaccessible. Uh, there are two options before us. One, that we talk to WebEx guys and, and motivate them that whether they could make this tool accessible for visually impaired screen reader users. So if not, then we have no option but to change the tool. Uh, there are a certain tools in the market uh, like uh, Internet Society because I am also a member board of director ISAC Islamabad chapter. So we use Zoom for uh, online communications and remote uh, communications. It is pretty accessible and it gives uh, control to the users. And for visually impaired, being a visually impaired user, I also participate in online meetings. It is uh, pretty accessible. Uh, we can also, I think, uh, uh, Andrea has uh, uh, put some people to check its accessibility. So if, if WebEx cannot be made accessible, my recommendation here would be to change the tool. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have another speaker, and would you like to, to get the mic? Can you, can you get it close to your, you have, okay, thank you. Please give your name. Sure, Glenn McKnight. I'm with a not-for-profit organization call, called the Foundation for Building Sustainable Communities based in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. Um, Judith and I belong to a, a working group, and Judith is the chair uh, in, with ICANN on technology issues and and Judith and I have been champions with ICANN on accessibility issues but we did a analysis of different conferencing tools and one of the things in our matrix is accessibility so zoom was very high on the list but what we'll do is share with the committee the comparisons and about a year before that with IEEE our Toronto section we actually analyzed 22 different tools some good some bad some like, just because there's a price, don't assume you have to pay it, because they oftentimes have an educational and not-for-profit pricing. So if you, you, they are looking for helping the community, so if you, if they come back, oh, gosh, it's so expensive, and explain what it's used for, I'm more than likely they will be uh, quite cooperative. Thank you very much. And are there any other comments? Okay. Jerry is on, right. This Jerry Ellis is our member of DICAD. He's actually one of my best right-hand guys, and we fight all the time. He's a wonderful guy. Jerry, can, can you be spoke, can you speak? He doesn't have audio. He doesn't have audio. That's because he can't find it. He doesn't have audio. Can you, t can you ask, Jerry, can you type, and we will read what you're saying. You must be, if you can hear us, you must be gratified to hear what is being said that supports your view of WebEx. We're, we'll, because Jerry is the individual who could not participate remotely because of that. Are we getting anything, Judith? If he can hear, you don't have to type. Anyway, he's listening. If he has a comment, no matter where we are in the program, we'll get him in and ask him to see if he can get on with the with the audio, because he managed the other day. Okay, having said that, uh, I have personally taken it on myself to have a meeting with uh, Cheng Tai in the new year to discuss this and other accessibility issues to make it more accessible. And, uh, sorry, oh, Cheng Tai is the secretariat. I can never pronounce his last name, give me a, everybody says it at the same time and I can't hear it. 
one person. Get, Ganilla, use the mic, will you please? I can never pronounce this. Changatai Masango. Thank you. Thank you. I'm dyslexic by way of, I can't read and pronounce very well, but I have help. Anyway, so we're going to try and see if we can have a better and more accessible IGF next year that takes that into consideration, also takes the rooms into consideration, takes the access of the fact that we need at least two screens. If anybody was in the meeting earlier this morning, the great big round wonderful room, what was that? XXV11. And one of the comments came up was, why do we have the Roman numerals? Why not numbers? Well, of course, Jerry couldn't see why, but that's what's above the door. So maybe in future, how we put this down, like it is number 27 or it's number 28, that that could go into the program as well to make it more understandable. Okay, moving on. Unless there's anybody else who'd like to make a comment, and I don't like the sound of my own voice, even though I talk a lot. So please, put your hands up if you want to speak. We have other facilities, like um, the registration process, online, on-site, and the physical accessibility of the venue. Now, does anybody have any comments about that? As usual, I do. Um, have you noticed that there was roadworks to the main entrance? So people who needed to have immediate access had a little trouble. And also, there was a great amount of difficulty in getting a, it came through in the end, but there was a lot of miscommunication about how we did this, to have a car available for certain persons with disabilities, either temporary or permanent, to be able to have a ride down. And it was not really written out that well, but it all came through in the end because it said a car can have access if it is registered. When we got there, we found out it had to be a taxi. Fortunately, the person who I had designated to help me do this was a private taxi, so it worked. But clearer instructions about how we access the venue for persons with disabilities has to be more graphic. And one of the things I wanted to show you here is that the ITU did a technical paper. It is in on the website. It is called, well, don't worry about the wonderful letters, S-T-P-A-C-C, -C, REMPART. That means it is guidelines for supporting remote participating in meetings. We also did a couple of years ago, and Francesca Cesar Bianchi, who will raise her hand and speak into the mic and say hello, please, from G3ICT, say five seconds of words. Hello. Help, <laughs> helped me. We both together got the DICAD one, which later then morphed into the ITU one. And these are available online. We're going to revamp them and make them into one so that the same one applies to IGF that applies to ITU. And the second one that we did was a technical paper on guidelines for accessible meetings. We do have persons with disabilities attend question 26, question 28, ITUD, ITUR, and we needed to have some kind of guidelines because the turnover in staff is very frequent these days and we have younger people coming in who need to learn how to handle this. So we have these and they're available online and we'll be able to direct you to those if in fact you need to have them and we would welcome you downloading them. They can be downloaded but for free. Um, and if somebody is telling me don't forget to say something about something, uh, I'm bugged. Every, I'll look at that one second and see what that's about. If somebody's listening in, they've come through on my WhatsApp but I'll look at that in one second. Um, just a minute. Ah, somebody is typing. So there, there's somebody listening in who is typing for me uh, something to say, and I'll, as soon as that's complete, I will tell you what that's about. Does anybody have any suggestions or comments? Shadi, how did you find the accessibility here for yourself? And you have to pull down the mic. I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. Let's see. Um, 
I actually thought it was better than uh, previous years. I haven't been to the IGF for a few years. Um, <coughs> um, yeah, I think the uh, conflict between security and uh, and being able to get more closely uh, with, with with the car. Um, uh, I think also the signage. Uh, it is a an old and a little bit of confusing building. Getting oriented, I think, uh, having put some um, online maps, maybe, um, or, or a bit of sketches on online on the website. Um, I don't recall having seen them there. Uh, they were? OK. Uh, then I didn't do that carefully. Um, <clears throat> so just, um, but otherwise, I think for the, um, yeah, it's, 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 um, I'll have to think more and uh, maybe write up. Okay, Shadi, can I put you in charge of that, of what your views are? Because we did go through an experience getting you registered, didn't we? Right. Um, yeah. And uh, the people are very nice. Once they realize what's at stake and what we wanted to do, they accommodate. But also, uh, Chengi Tai and I both agree we have to start the process sooner than later and get a procedure in place at the venue so they know what right. to do. Wouldn't you agree, Shadi? I would, actually. Andrea, I have a very different question, if I may. Go. Um, <laughs> uh, how, how long did we schedule for this agenda item? Uh, and and um, I'm just wondering how much of this we can do offline and collect some of this information. Um, and uh, I'm really, really interested in the next agenda item. The Future, okay, we, we, we run a democratic group <laughs> here, and if Shadi tells me to stop talking and go to the next item, I definitely will accommodate you. Okay, I just wanted to be sure everybody had a time to say. The next agenda item is the future of DICAD activities. Yay, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Shadi, you get the job of starting to, oh, sorry, was there a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for helping. Go ahead, please. Can you, you go ahead. Okay. Put, um, say your name first. For uh, the my name is Bhaskar from Bangladesh. One of the biggest challenges for the visually impaired people in a conference, we cannot really find the important people to meet. Maybe you are running in front of me, but I cannot catch you. This is one of the biggest challenges for the visually impaired people in such a big uh, conference. Believe me, I didn't meet much people, many people here. Maybe there's many. But unfortunately, people are not seeing us. Mm -hmm. Secondly, <clears throat> it is nearly impossible to explore by myself um, uh, alone without anybody's help. It is really, um, I think it is a full of barrier in a conference like this. I, I can say it is not only here. If we go to the COPS um, Conference of Estate Party on CRPD, same thing we follow. We saw many big people are running on, <laughs> in front of us, but we cannot catch them. We, we cannot run alone here and there. We are not getting the information in accessible format. So conference should consider the accessibility needs of people with visual disability, which is really, really important. Even I am not able to explore the agenda of this conference as there is not in a um, fully accessible format. Thank you. Shadi, we have to wait one second, then we can go to two. This is important. Thank you. Um, do you have a suggestion on how we could do that? I have some ideas, but I want your suggestions, please. Yeah, okay. I am asking you. So <laughs> you can see uh, one suggestion, I sh we can in invent some application. Maybe we can identify the people. I don't know. But that is another issue. That, but I think we should send an um, uh, information to the all participants that there is some people with disabilities are coming. They may want to meet with you. If you see them, just say hello to them. And that is very important, you know. Then we may <clears throat> get the people here. And that, that is one of the way. And another thing is that if we get the, um, some information about who is coming uh, uh, in the conference, maybe registration or other information can be shared with the visual impaired participants. That also one, um, one at least we can know that there is some people are coming. And as if we get the contact of them, then we may communicate with them. Maybe face-to-face -face or uh, introduction is not needed. Any kind of verbal or e-communication can um, reduce the gap of um, uh, com uh, like 
accessing communication with the VIPs. Thank you. Wait a minute, Mohammed, I see your hand. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, couple of suggestions uh, to what uh, Bashkar has raised, the accessibility issues. I also noticed uh, certain issues, and I would focus more on uh, putting forward solutions, uh, because there are much of issues that has been raised here. Uh, first thing first, that uh, if there is a conference being organized at a venue, one thing that organizers can do is uh, they can give a list of accessibility features related to that building so that, uh, and this can be put online uh, as, alongside the agenda on the website. Uh, I could not find if there was one uh, for this building or for this uh, conference. Uh, related to the agenda, I uh, feel that the agenda was fairly accessible uh, online. It was uh, accessible through computer. I did not use the app. Uh, regarding uh, other features, like uh, we have certain tools here. Uh, there could be toolkits about the tools in the conference room uh, for all the users. I am I am sure I am not the only one, uh, notwithstanding the fact of visual impairment. Many people may have, uh, have had problems using these tools completely. Uh, like certain, uh, there are uh, certain rooms or certain sessions where translation is available, people may find difficult to change channels. So, uh, and certain, uh, in, in certain rooms and certain conferences, there are screen uh, focused uh, gest or gesture focused uh, options on the screen. So visual impair, visually impaired people may have problems in using those tools. So if, if uh, bringing uh, or changing the tools completely accessible, although it should be uh, the, uh, the <coughs> norm of the conference that uh, the tools should be completely accessible, but uh, if this, this is too much costly, it cannot be arranged. I'll, I know we, are not, we do not live in a perfect world, but what we can do is whatever accessibility features are available there, these can be put in a, uh, in a toolkit and uh, put online. This can be promoted through different uh, brochures. This can be mentioned even in the call for the conference that accessibility tools are available here. And it is not a big deal, I guess, if, if someone takes, uh, takes the task. Uh, for the record, this was Mohammed Shabir from Pakistan. Thank you. Okay, Mohammed, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to put what both of you, I'm gonna say this name wrong again, Mashni also, oops, what happened? Ah, we just had a mini disaster, but it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna ask you both, like I asked Chatty, would you do me the favor, please, of writing some of these comments down? Because though we have captioning, and Jerry's audio is okay. All right, we're gonna get Jerry in here. Sorry, we will get to your, forgive me, um, uh, chatty, but we got Jerry on, so I've got to let Jerry go. I, if you can put in writing and send me emails, it'll help me really jog what's important. Even though we've got the captioning, to go through it takes time, but you know exactly what you want. Uh, we did, um, I know Francesca put her hand up. Yes. Uh, so go ahead, and then we'll have I, Jerry. I just, I had a quick comment. I think many of these things could be solved with having, by having an accessibility desk. Uh, with a coordinator who can be available by phone or, or you know, and with an orientation at the beginning of the conference. In many conferences, we organize one in, in particular, we do have this kind of availability of having like an orientation with some volunteers that can, you know, assist and uh, an accessibility tape desk where you can get the information you need. I think to that's, navigate that's the spot on. And mm -hmm. we did have one in Mexico. There was an accessibility desk in Mexico. And I think that was a very good move. I think that was the first time I ever saw that with IGF. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Hang on, we got, and, but I wanna get Jerry on before we lose him like we lost somebody yesterday. Just a thought on that. I, I think that's a really great idea. But would it be also an idea to have it be uh, 
just a, a, a buddy program for people who are new to the IGF. Not necessarily just focused on accessibility, but when you're new to the IGF, um, uh, you know, m maybe some of the more veterans can <laughs> uh, w w would actually volunteer. We, we do that at our WTC technical plenary, and we often have people who sign up who want to be buddies and help orient people who are new. Okay, so we'd have a program where we suggest to the Secretariat to initiate a buddy program. Yeah. Okay, that'll go in the list. I think that could. And I know you want to say something else to that. Can I hold it for one minute because I'm going to try and get Jerry on. Can we get Jerry? Jerry, can you come and speak? Can he speak? You have to listen to him this way. You have to, if you want to hear Jerry, we have to hear him with the earphones. Jerry, go ahead, please. Yes, Jerry, we can. Go ahead, but speak as loudly as you can. Yes, just go, Jerry. Are you asking a question, Jerry, for, for that wants an, an answer? And we have poor audio quality about the airport. I understood what he said. That's not my question. Um, I think I heard him correctly. I'm going to speak, and then I, hopefully he'll be able to come through. That's another topic because I arranged. Are you there, Jerry? Go ahead, please go ahead. We can't hear you very well. Can you get really close to the mic? Unfortunately, this is. Yeah, uh, yes, just keep talking. This is the problem with WebEx. It just doesn't work. Jerry, I'm sorry, we're having trouble. If, you, if there's a real key point that you wish to use or, or you wish us to uh, talk about, would you kindly type it and then it will be, it will be spelled out. There's somebody who wants to have a a word. Go ahead. Yes. Um, my name, name is, is Paul Vermeulent from Handicap International. Um, if you take an iPhone and he just calls <coughs> in and you have the iPhone on the table with the microphone, everybody could hear him. So there are easy solutions possible. We know that solution. The problem is he's in Ireland. And if he does that, it's only a UK number and it costs money. And that is the objection for him to do that. He ac Jerry actually withdrew from a workshop in protest because it was expected that he pay for that phone call. And there are other versions of, Web of WebEx that have numbers for different countries, but it is not the one that was given to IGF to use. So he made a distinct protest that he should not have to pay to call a UK number to be able to hook into WebEx. I didn't know if I'd get into that today, but that we do know the solutions. But this, that was his, he's his worked very hard to try and get onto WebEx. So the situation is, even when he got onto WebEx, it didn't work. Use the mic if you're going to say what he's saying. Um, this is Judith. So one, uh, um, one of the things is, is that apparently the people on remote can hear him. It's just us who cannot hear him. Ah. 
Okay, that's another interesting aspect. We're making notes on this with the captioning. So the people on remote could hear him. D does that mean the captioner could hear him? I don't think so, because I was seeing captioner. No, poor audio quality. So the captioner could not hear him. So, uh, but Jerry has already written a critique, so we know what's going to go. All this information that you're giving me will be recorded. Due to the time, I am going to um, say, anybody else has something they would like to add to this conversation? And there's a whole line of you over there that hasn't said anything. I'm looking at all of you. I see a smiling face. Does anyone have any comments or contributions? Because I, I, everybody's laughing. That's great. I'm not that scary. You have to raise your hand. Okay, Shadi, I think we're going to leave this topic and get on to future DICAD activities. Let me read what's on here for the benefit of people who cannot read the uh, screen. We have down first, outcomes of the workshop on universal design and creating accessible global digital future that we organized, and the Internet of Things and Accessibility for People with Disability, organized by Ganilla Asprink. And then we have the review of the DICAD paper, also available at IGF's review platform. So Sh Shadi, what do you want to focus on? Because you've been jumping up and down very quietly in your head and I've been watching. Go ahead and see if we can get that. And the desk is not accessible for you to get to the mic. Actually, yeah, uh, several of the desks are low and at the very nice height to get you right on your kneecap. Um, anyway, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I didn't have particular uh, or specifics in mind. The idea is that um, I'm, I'm just, um, I haven't been to the IGF for several years, um, and it's good to be back. <laughs> uh, it was really interesting discussions. Um, maybe it's sometimes good to take a break here and there. Uh -huh. Maybe that that's not. <laughs> uh, shouldn't go on record too late. Um, and um, I think particularly the session this morning where we had the other dynamic coalitions uh, I, I was really interested to see the work, and I think also the, the, the moderator, Tanya, of, of the session mentioned that, that the dynamic coalitions maybe started off really separately and now are becoming maybe more mature in themselves, having their communities and, and uh, um, kind of growing up a little bit, thinking about external outreach. There was a bit of that discussion, not only inside, but uh, to outside communities. and. Um, I was thinking it might actually be a really good time to also think about how we want to influence all these other dynamic coalitions. Um, the moderator, Tanya, had read all the reports from each of the dynamic coalitions. I hadn't. Uh, I knew that. <laughs> uh, I hadn't read them all. Um, and um, I think this, this might actually be quite an interesting exercise. It's just a suggestion for discussion that we as a dynamic coalition, you know, for the coming period, uh, read all these reports and try to set ourselves um, that we make comments or suggestions or recommendations to each of these dynamic coalitions of how they could in better address accessibility, maybe even make offers of how we could work with them together. Um, and I don't mean just blanket things like, you know, consider people with disabilities, but really digging a little bit deeper. Might be a bit challenging to find expertise in all these areas, um, but I think we are a large community and we also have contacts outside, you know, or even larger communities. And if we divide the work, I think we could really, uh, you know, in the next months, in the next period, in the next year or something, uh, by the time of the next IGF have really made a leap forward in terms of being much more integrated yeah, later maybe even thinking more about the regional IGFs and so on, but, but let's not scope creep, let's actually <laughs> stay with one first and think about that, how we can get accessibility as a topic, as a content topic more across. Of course, those um, participation guidelines are really important and I think we should give it 
to each so that everybody's cognizant. Um, if they don't have members with disabilities in their coalitions, then, uh, then they need to work more on that. <laughs> um, but that's kind of a, um, what do you call it, a, a, a bridge or, or, or a helper, a tool uh, in order, the, the, the goal is actually really to make the content, the output accessible. Um, and how to get there is these guidelines, but the actual thing is, is um, making them think about accessibility in all what they're developing. Thank you, Shadi. Ganilla, would you like to make a comment, please? Thank you, Andrea. Uh, yes, I, um, I totally support uh, Shadi's uh, suggestions and want to use the uh, workshop I organized on the Internet of Things as a, as a, um, a, a, a basis for maybe one way to move forwards. Um, there is a dynamic coalition on the Internet of Things, so um, to organize a workshop where we're talking about a hot topic in regards to uh, technology and and inviting the convener of the dynamic coalition of the internet of things to come and speak and to hear what people with disabilities have to say uh, when it comes to um, particular applications that can help uh, in regard to uh, new uh, technologies in smart housing, transport, etc., um, can be beneficial. So we know that disability is a cross-cutting issue, and if if we can move along those lines uh, with a number of the other dynamic coalitions, uh, when it comes to gender, for example, and and um, there's one on connecting the unconnected, uh, children, um, and so forth. So. It, it, it is relevant in all of those different areas. And uh, maybe in future we can look at um, organizing workshops that have a particular technology focus. Uh, you know, artificial intelligence is something that would benefit people with disabilities in a number of ways and involve people who are at the cutting edge of those technologies so that they understand what is needed in accessibility. Thank you, Ganilla. There's a couple of thoughts that raced through my mind about how to do this. And just so some of the people who have not joined us or have not experienced our conference calls, we caption them. Uh, we do have access to a, we don't always have to use something like Adobe Connect or some of the other conference tools that the ITU uses, but the ITU supports and gives a contribution towards the, well, pays for the calls and pays for a secretariat and we have web space on the ITU web page. So they sponsor the calls and we discuss these things in the calls and people can follow it through uh, the captioning and also make comments in a chat box where if they cannot uh, speak or uh, they do not wish to speak, whatever. But in any case, we do do that. We make about five, it's about five a year, isn't it, Kauru, that we have? Uh, uh, ex DICAD, yeah, about, no, we have four or five calls a year. Yep. That's okay, we like music. That's all right. I know it's a call to prayer, but it is music in my mind. Thank you. So, I don't want to talk over that because it's disrespectful. Are you okay with that? Okay, thank you. No, I don't, f I don't find that unattractive at all. Um, I've just gotten fractured in my elderly brain. The other thing we haven't discussed, and speaking of elderly brain, is older people. All of you are very young in this room. I'm the elder senior citizens here. There might be one with a gray-haired beard over there who sort of is smiling at me when I say that. We're all going to get to the point where we're going to need accessible features and accessibility is going to become more and more important. So um, one of the things I was thinking of doing was that in that meeting, we'll do an agenda for the next meeting and do it by email. For those of you, as I said, who are not on, if you wish to be on, we've, you've put the sign-up sheet and we'll send you and you can certainly join the Dynamic Coalition and participate in these calls. 
uh, sorry, Ju Judith, we have a comment. Just a minute. Who is it? Deidre's on. Okay, Deidre Williams is a dynamic coalition member from, uh, she's in one of the, she's in St. Lucia, I think. Yeah, so hang on, can we hear her or is she typing? All right, would you like, put your thing on and yes. say, Deidre has a comment. Comment from Deidre Williams. Um, she said it's too noisy um, for her to speak up, but she wants to talk, um, would like to have an information clearing house. She thinks it would be very useful activity for the DCAD. I'm not sure which activity she wants. Can An she information clearing house. What so is like, so she wants a, one place for a lot of more accessibility documents on all different topics that we would discuss and, and have the DCAD be like that clearing house for that. Okay, we do have a web page and we do post everything on a web page. I think we could very easily make a web page that accommodated that. Karu, can we do that? We could make, you want to speak, Karu? Could we make a web page like that? Yes, Karu says yes. She's too busy trying to keep us connected. Okay, right. Yes, we could do that, Deidre. Uh, we can, we will post the comments that have been made. We will post this particular captioning record. We will post the captioning record of Ganilla's workshop and the DICAD workshop for people to read after the fact and um, so we will have a page for that and we'll define it clearly so you can get into it. Uh, as I said, the ITU supports and sponsors the web pages for the Dynamic Coalition. Any other comments from Deidre? No? Okay. Does anybody else want to make a comment? Uh, well, on what we were... Yes? Great. Please push the button and give your name. Hello, this is Phileas, like Philip and Andreas in one word. Um, I'm from Austria and I'd like to raise the issue of proprietary tools and software in general. I think it's very bad for um, accessibility in general and I think WebEx is a great example of this. Um, WebEx is from a vendor which is producing this proprietary tool. Um, if you want to have this feature of accessibility built in, um, there is no way around then communicating with WebEx, getting money for them, implementing that feature, but still they decide upon if accessibility is an issue or not. You can't force them to make it able for everyone. And yeah, if WebEx would be open source, for example, um, you could give someone money to implement accessibility features. And I think that's a very big issue that is like um, not mentioned at all so far today or at this panel and one other thing I also want to mention is um, DRM, um, digital right management in web browsers. Um, I think it's also bad for accessibility um, because it would mean for um, producers of accessibility tools that um, they need to fulfill DRM requirements and people that build um, accessibility tools uh, are often low on resources and they can't put the efforts into DRM. It's basically a waste of their time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think that's wonderful what you've just said. It's recorded and we're definitely gonna make an emphasis on that. I know, Shadi, go ahead. It's, you have, I can, I can tell, I can tell by the hairs on your eyebrows. You, yeah. Go That's ahead. what you get from a uh, <laughs> long time working together, uh, is that uh, we know each other well. Uh, so, um, first of all, on the first point, I completely agree. Um, and I think uh, standards also like WebRTC uh, are helpful in creating open standards as a base and also uh, on the tooling level uh, that uh, things could plug in. With regard to DRM, however, regardless of my personal opinion on DRM. Um, we, uh, I, I should, disc I, I work for the World Wide Web Consortium for WCC. Um, we have looked at the accessibility questions very thoroughly. Uh, we haven't been able to verify these. Uh, we have a report on that online that I'm happy to share with you. Um, and uh, we could uh, take a look at that. So I, I to my knowledge right now, there aren't these, uh, yeah, the DRM does not directly, th there were arguments that it um, 
reduces access to assistive technologies or that, you know, you know there were, there were uh, such claims made, we haven't been able to verify these claims um, and, and the report is available that we have to discuss with you. Could I ask you, Shadi, I'm, uh, and I'm oh. sorry, I couldn't quite get your name as well, what do the letters DRM stand for? Sorry for the jargon. Digital rights management. Digital, yes. Okay, yeah. it was in the beginning. Okay. It's, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah. Okay, well, now I know it's DRM. I, it was said in the beginning, but it just didn't connect. Okay, so, all right. Yes, please, go ahead, say some more. So, as my direct response, um, there was a talk at the last year's uh, Chaos and Communication Congress on uh, a tool for recording um, HDMI video uh, output from laptops for talks, so you can basically stream it. And this is one example where DRM um, is already breaking things, basically, because um, you can't record um, HDMI if there is um, DRM basically enabled. Um, it's not possible technically. It's th like the whole idea behind DRM, and this is only for visual. Um, if you go to audio, um, like the example I wanted to take is, um, it's not the case right now for DRM that it will block that it does block accessibility, um, but it will probably for the future because um, people who can implement tools um, will become less and less um, because it's basically harder for them um, if there is more and more DRM involved, not only for video but for other things as well for content in general. If so yes, if sorry. I understand correctly, because I'm learning all the time, DRM is restricting on the principle of rights and therefore we have less accessibilities because of this ethereal idea of rights or is this to protect governments or what? Shadi, please explain. It's, um, um, DRM is one of the ways in which, or a standardized way in which um, producers could control who has, who can play back uh, media. Um, particularly, I think uh, a lot of the uh, film and music producers who um, uh, want to ensure that uh, people who are consuming certain content um, are contributing to uh, the production of it. That's one way of uh, looking at it. Now, the idea is that you can lock the media and you can say you don't have the rights to watch this content because you did not subscribe or whatever reasons. And um, this is, of course, uh, it, it makes sense that uh, actually it goes even further. Um, there was a question whether this would prohibit for instance, researchers from researching ways of providing the content in alternative ways for, for people with disabilities, for instance, or if this would dis disproportionately impact people with disabilities more than, than others. And so uh, these claims are being made um, with, um, in the name of accessibility. We've taken them very seriously because, you know, there is something there and we've looked at it, um, but when it really comes down to our understanding, locking or you know, saying you don't have content is not on a basis of a disability, but on a basis that applies to all who fall in that category, not necessarily people with disabilities. And so we haven't been able to verify most of the claims that have been made. That's Thank you for that. Um, I wasn't clear on that for sure. Uh, now I understand. So it's almost like a copyright issue. That's kind of where it is. Okay, got, because we had a conversation. There's a young lady in the back. I forgot your name. Maya. Maya, you and I had a conversation about this. Do you want to add to that? You, you were very clear on explaining. Get close to the mic because you have a soft voice. Uh, well, uh, this is actually, this is copyright related, but it's an entirely different issue, like the, uh, what we discussed doesn't really touch upon this. But uh, uh, this whole DRM, it was ki uh, ended up being kind of a huge deal, uh, like uh, the standards, like, uh, 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 and like uh, the, 
uh, W3C trying to reach an agreement on those. And actually, the, as I've understood it, the Electronic Fo Frontier Foundation ended up leaving the consortium because of this uh, uh, the result of this debate. Uh, so it's not entirely li like it's not a small deal. Yeah. Thank you, Maya. Okay, we have five minutes left. We actually have covered number four because I already showed you the uh, accessible guidelines that the ITU produced over the DICAD guidelines on accessible meetings. And those we will pursue and finish up and update in our subsequent meetings next year. Um, and I'm, I'm going to come back to this. I just wanted to, I just got a word in my brain that there's five minutes and I'm just saying that I've covered the other bit. So we can stay with this topic. Um, okay. Do you want to say one thing more about this? Yeah, and I just we'll wanted to bring to it back. I, I mean, we went off on a tangent on a very specific topic here, which is really relevant and, and, and very, but maybe um, the bigger phrasing here is, uh, open source and interoperability. Mm -hmm. I think this is something we can agree on. We had a talk about that in the session on uh, IoT, IoT accessibility, that here again, interoperability is what is a big challenge to accessibility. If you cannot access with custom-made assistive technologies or with open source uh, software. If Fernando were here, I'm channeling Fernando, one of the DICAD members as well with the open source tooling. Um, so I think this is maybe, without going into the specifics, uh, but in, in general, the, 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 the direction that um, is maybe something that could be one of our key points that we try to bring into other dynamic okay. coalitions as well uh, as something that is important to accessibility. Okay, since we're kind of winding up, that goes on the list as well. Um, we will produce a report of this meeting and we will take a online vote if that's okay with everybody. We will schedule a meeting in the new year, but we don't have a date now, but we usually send everybody an email. If you have given us your email address, we will take it that you are interested. If you want to join, let us know and we'll tell you how to do it. And we welcome anybody to join the Dynamic Coalition. And this is all about accessibility. And we have discovered that uh, even though we are, this is what we're supposed to be doing. And most of the time, what we do is make it accessible for everybody to come to the venue and everybody to have access to the information. We tend to be the people that the IGF Secretariat has come to rely on. We're not only a dynamic coalition, we are the accessible, acce we are the A-team. We make sure you can get here, we make sure you can uh, have transportation, we make sure that you can access the information. And this needs to be taken up by the IGF in their own staff. And we need to examine whether or not, uh, I think we're all in agreement, at least in DICAD, that WebEx is not the tool for us but we will put that to the vote again by email and other uh, tools that are being tested by the ITU. I'm uh, being told that we can, we can share our results. And we do have a representative from the ITU here, uh, Mr. Jose Maria Bandanero, and I'm making claims that we're gonna do this in the ITU. And I wonder if you just give a few comments about the fact that the ITU supports the, Dica the Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability. Can you s say a few words, please? Sure. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so indeed, ITU has been supporting the Dynamic Coalition since the beginning. And we're very happy that uh, the chair is also chairing one of our groups, the Joint Coordination Activity in ITU. We have different groups looking at accessibility, uh, and uh, Andrea is, is chairing uh, 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 a coordination activity that is making sure that we are well coordinated. So we're very happy that precisely this function here is, is uh, taken by Andrea because it can ensure we have good coordination and we c learn from each other. Uh, I think we all agree that making mistakes is part of the innovation, so we are happy when mistakes are made. We're not so happy when the same mistakes are made over and over. So it's about learning from each other and hopefully reducing the number of mistakes. But new mistakes is okay. Technologies evolve, so there are new tools, uh, so it's good to test, but it's always good to make sure that 
we are uh, taking into account the needs of persons with disabilities. So in ITU, uh, Andrea has been championing and challenging us uh, the, the, the same way that she's challenging the IGF. So, uh, and this helps us a lot to also bring the message to our constituency that we need to invest in accessibility. So as Andrea is saying, so the, the venue is more or less venue, uh, the kind of accessibility uh, for person in wheelchair is normally fine. Uh, normally, but now the challenge is on accessible meetings, documents, so it's a moving target, the reality. We will never have full accessibility, it's something we have to continue working. Uh, in 2013 in ITU we put together a policy that was endorsed by our council, our, our governing body, that give us uh, the secretariat a very strong tool to continue pushing and, and allocating budget and making as many meetings possible as accessible. Uh, this year, well, so that's again, it's a moving target. We're working on this and we are very happy to share the experiences with the IGF. We continue making progress. Uh, a few days ago, we launched a series of publications that may, uh, are accessible by design from the beginning. So uh, if you go to ITU slash accessibility, you can find all the work. I'm not saying that we are perfect. We still need a lot to do. Um, and we're counting also on the experiences from the IGF to also improve our processes. So. I can tell you in the, la in the years I've been in ITU, I've seen improvement, but the challenges, uh, there are new challenges also. So it's again, it's a moving target, and we need to work together to make sure that we make all our meetings, services accessible, and also that we ensure that ICTs stay accessible for persons with disabilities. So uh, maybe just highlighting that we also need to look at uh, ICT standards, internet standards, interoperability. So it's not just about having meeting accessible, it's just about ensuring the ICT and the internet is accessible for persons with disabilities. So that's the other part that uh, we, we are happy to see being discussed in this group. Thank you. Thank you, Jose Maria. Please, you haven't spoken yet. Would you, we have, we'll give you, we're gonna go over, don't worry. Go few, ahead. Just a few seconds. Your name is? Uh, my name is Esmeralda Moscatelli from the International Federation of Library Association, IFLA ah. for short. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that we are working on uh, uh, in the area of copyrights after the Marrakesh Treaty quite uh, aggressively. It's a long way. It's a lot of meetings in, at WIPO and other places similar to WIPO. Um, but uh, if we can, <laughs> if we can uh, uh, be of uh, any help, I put my name there. And um, please uh, feel free to reach me. This is not really my area of expertise. I have a colleague, and I'm speaking on her behalf, uh, who does all this work on copyright, but we will be glad to help in any way. And this is also to speak about the, mm, the, this, the, the work of the DCs and the fact that m most of the times they really overlap or, or one can complete the other in different ways. So just um, I will be, we will be glad to be part of it. Thank you. I welcome your expertise and help tremendously. And I'm going to say thank you in sign language. We're going to cover sign language next time. We haven't had a request for it yet, but it's coming. And that's another can of worms. But sign language is an expensive accessibility tool to because it involves human beings. And we need two of them for each language in every country. If they all turn up, we're broke. So the thing is, that's another issue that I was going to talk about, but I'll just put that in your head for the future. And I want to say thank you. We got one more? Do we? Is, ah, all right. I'm going to give you one minute, and then we have to close. Go. Get close to the mic and say your name. Uh, this is Irene. I'm from Bangladesh. Um, actually, one uh, research uh, survey actually so, uh, said that 15% of the overall Bangladesh populations are uh, going through some disabilities and uh, accessibility issues actually. So uh, coming from that country uh, actually, uh, I feel that uh, such developed countries are uh, giving little privilege, at least they're thinking um, uh, for the um, disabled uh, people. But yes, Bangladesh is also trying to give all sort of facilities. Nowadays, a lot of innovations uh, related to software or hardware, which can support the um, disabled people or the visually impaired people uh, to you know, have their uh, daily life making easier. Uh, coming uh, back to IGF, in the IGF daily agenda, uh, it was upsetting to me that I haven't seen much more discussions related 
related to uh, you know uh, the disabled people or the visually impaired things yes uh, but this uh, agenda is you know covering uh, the gap uh, very positively one thing i may like to recommend that we may welcome uh, next time or ahead um, more and more agendas in the daily routine on uh, the um, uh, accessible apps or softwares so so that will basically help to brainstorm that what would be the new technology what is the technological gap to improve uh, for the people who are disabled or visually impaired thank you very much thank you guess who's in charge of that one you i want to get your name because you can help me with that because it's very important to you is that a deal yeah, actually, uh, uh, in in my country, we have a community as well, and we are trying to develop some ideas that is related to software and hardware as well, how to implement. Uh, okay. Sorry to cut you short. Yes, we will talk. I want to say thank you to everybody. We have to close because the next group is on, and I want to say thank you for a really good interactive meeting. I'm so happy that a lot of you started to speak. Speak earlier next time. And thank you. And I'm going to close the meeting. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Can you not speak? I'm going to, you know what you do. And I'm going to tell you, can you wait till somebody says, okay. Because